Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for your goodness and your mercies. We are so grateful, Father Lord, for granting us the opportunity to meet this week. We pray, O oh God, thanking you for all that you've done for us throughout the week, for all the things that you are teaching us, and for how far you've brought us in this year. We commit tonight's teaching into your hands. We commit our resource person into your hands. We ask that, Father Lord, may you minister and speak through her. The Lord should not speak of her own accord, but the Lord should speak and teach us led by you. We also pray for missing ourselves into your hands that, Father, you will, you will speak to us, Lord, that our hearts will be ready, like good soul, ready to receive a seed. That as we receive it, we will go forth and bear fruits and show forth your glory wherever we are planted. We thank you, Father, Lord, for all that you've done for us. And we thank you and we bless you for an answered prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay. So once again, you're welcome to tonight's and Abiyosi service. We are continuing with our theme for the month, which is Jesus, the true vine. And for those who were um, at service last week, we were really blessed by the teaching we received. And today we'll be continuing with the theme, Jesus, the true vine. And our service leader and our resource person for tonight is Reverend Ikria. And so at this juncture, I'll hand over to Reverend Ikria as she continues to teach us on the theme, Jesus, the true vine. Please over to you, Reverend Ikria. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to spend time in your presence. We ask, Lord, that you declutter our hearts where we are in our various homes or at work or even listening and driving home. We ask, Lord, that in as much as we can pay attention to our environment so that we are safe, that we are not distracted. Lord, speak into our hearts. Father, declutter our minds. Circumcise our ears so that we can hear your true word. Circumcise our hearts that we may receive it with obedience. Increase while we are here, O oh Lord, and diminish all of us. Meet each of us at the point of our need. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable unto you. O oh Lord, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Amen. So, last week we talked about uh, Jesus, the true vine. And we talked about the fact that the, the, the fact that Jesus describes himself as the true vine indicates that there is a false vine. So what is this false vine? And we said it was Israel. And this false vine produced false fruit. And that fruit is a fruit of violence, the fruit of oppression. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 7 says that the nation of Israel is the vineyard of the Lord of heaven's armies. The people of Judah are his pleasant garden. He expected a crop of justice, but instead he found oppression. He expected to find righteousness, but instead he heard cries of violence. So this is the challenge that God faced. Israel was supposed to be the true vineyard with the true vine, but it ended up being a false vine and it produced false fruit. It produced self-righteousness. It produced violence, oppression. And so God established a new vine, a true vine, the Lord Jesus Christ. And in this vine, we said last week that there's one fruit that is produced, one spiritual fruit, and that fruit is love. We said in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, that but the fruit of the Spirit is love. And it manifests as joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And Mr. Hayford gave us a fantastic 
version of the Bible which truly expresses this. Today we are looking at ourselves, we as the branches to this true vine. And so that we can recollect the scripture, I'm going to read it again. It is the gospel according to St. John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. John 15, 1 to 8. It says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will bear even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it has been severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask me for anything and it will be granted. Then you will produce much fruit. You, when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. This is the word of God. Now, in this gospel, Jesus paints a picture. It's a pretty simple picture. It's a picture in which he paints himself as the main vine in a vineyard. And we are the branches that are growing off him. And in this picture, he says that God is the gardener. And in as much as we are branches of this vine, this main vine, we are not the same. All the branches are, are different. They're different branches in the vineyard. And that's what I want us to look at for today's session. And as we look at the different types of branches, I want us to ask and answer the question, what kind of branch am I? What kind of branch are you? So we ask ourselves, what kind of branch am I? What kind of branch am I? And we're going to look at four branches. And I say four branches because these are the four branches that Jesus described in this gospel. The first type of branch Jesus described is the throwaway branch. In verse 2, he talks about his father, the gardener. He says, he, that is his father, cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit. Now, Jesus is obviously not talking about plants here. He's talking about people. He's not just talking about non-believers. He's talking about Christians. He's talking about backsliders. Those of us who at one time were strong Christians, but then something happened. A death, a disaster, job loss, something happened. And we stopped producing fruits, the fruit of the Spirit, love. Our love for God died. Our love for the things of God died. We stopped obeying God. We stopped living and talking in a Christian way. We started living and behaving like the rest of the unbelieving world. But why does this happen to people who were at one time really strong Christians? Verse 6 explains this to us. Jesus says, if anyone does not remain in me. In other words, no more word, no more scripture, no more church, no more prayer. When this happens, we lose our faith and we fall away. We stop bearing fruit and Jesus says we become throw away branches. The whole of verse 6 says, anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. 
such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. Too often, this happens to us as Christians. We break down somewhere in the middle of our Christian life. Why? Because at some point in our Christian journey, for many of us, it becomes easier to neglect the word of God and to neglect prayer. Because to deliberately and intentionally read God's word every day, to pray every day about everything. I mean, the Bible actually says, pray without ceasing. That is, it, it can be quite stressful. And so we'd rather put it off. Because it's a lot easier to sacrifice prayer for a meeting that could potentially bring us some money, right? It's easier to say, oh God, you are pray later. I'll read my Bible later. I'll do this later. I'll fellowship later. I'll clock onto, onto WhatsApp and, and, and be a part of an IVOC another time. You know, when, when they do the recording, I'll watch it later. Because there's always something more interesting for us to do than the word of God, than prayer. It's like exercise. If we are not intentional, we will keep postponing it. And over time, and as much as we think about it all the time, our physical bodies will become fat and lazy. And the same it is spiritually. Many of us have become fat and lazy in the spirit. And we produce no fruit, no love. But here's the thing. If we live this way, at the end of our time, our faith will be sealed. You see, Jesus has said to us that we should work while there is daylight. Daylight is life. Once that life runs out, once we are out of time, there's no more room or opportunity to work out our salvation. And so if at the time we die, we are detached from the vine, we have become throw away branches. Then on judgment day, all God is going to do is pick us up and throw us into that eternal fire. So there's no time for us to sit down and, and debate and think about, you know, when do I want to sort things out? We need to sort it out now. So again, what kind of branch are you? What kind of branch am I? Is the question we're asking ourselves. Are we producing spiritual fruit in our life? One fruit of the vine, love, and its various manifestations, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Is it made manifest in us? Or have we broken down somewhere on the road and become disconnected from the vine? If we have, there's good news. Jesus says that, if we say we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just. He will forgive us of our sin and he will cleanse us from our unrighteousness. And that is exa exactly what we need to do. We need to confess our sin in a meaningful way. Not just this Sunday recital that we do of Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. No, we need to recite it, say it meaningfully. When we say, have mercy on us, let us mean it. When we say the burden is intolerable for us, let us mean it. If we have become lazy and fat in the spirit and are producing no fruit, there is a chance for us to reconnect with the branch. And the way for us to do that is to remain in the word of God, to confess our sin and go back to the word of God, where he says, remain in me and I will remain in you. God will forgive us if we do meaningfully, honestly, from the core of our being, repent of our sin. But just because we are forgiven and reconnected with Jesus doesn't mean that God is going to give us an easy life. So many of us think that bad things only happen to people who are not in Christ. But nothing could be further from the truth. Bad things happen to Christians, strong Christians. And we know this because Jesus described the second type of branch as a pruned branch. He says he, as in the gardener, 
prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. Now, I think all of us can understand why God the Father would cut off a throwaway branch. Because it's dead, it's diseased, it's dry, it's brown, it's not producing any fruit. But why would God cut a perfectly green branch, which by his own admission is producing fruit? It seems cruel and unnecessary. But the reason the gardener does this is so that the branches can produce to their full potential, so they can reach their full potential. And that is what God does to you and I. He prunes us. He cuts into our life and takes away some things that we ourselves might not want removed, but they are things that need to be removed because they are hindering our spiritual progress. So sometimes God will take away our job. He'll take away our health. He'll even take away a loved one. He changes things around us to make life more difficult. And when we are being pruned, we start to ask questions like, why are you doing this to me, God? And if God would answer us, he would tell us that I am cutting into your life for your own good. He wants us to reach our full potential as Christians. So like Hayford asked last week about some manifestations of fruit, he said, you know, what if you, you are producing love? Yeah, but not all the manifestations are present in your life. And Jesus is saying, he said, yes, that happens. And he says, when that happens, the father prunes us. He cuts into us so that we can come to a place where we produce the fullness of the fruit of the spirit. Because God wants us to produce as many manifestations of the fruit of the Holy Spirit as possible. Perhaps some of us listening in right now are being pruned. We are going through the pruning process. We can feel it. And while it's happening, it is awful. But we need to trust that God is in control. We need to believe that the gardener knows what he is doing. While it is happening, we must trust that what we are going through is something that God is using to build us up. Now, at the point when we are struggling, we have a choice to make. When we are producing some fruit and then God starts cutting into us willingly, we, we, we have a choice to make. Either we can lose hope, backslide and become a throwaway branch or we can persevere, push through, go forward to the next type of branch that Jesus describes, which is the fruitful branch. In verse 8, Jesus says, when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. The faithful Christian is one whose life is filled with good works. Good works that are as a result of persevering through the challenges and the wildernesses of this life. In Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5, the Bible says, When we run into problems and trials, we know that they help us to develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. So when we persevere through the cutting from God, we start to produce good fruit. Fruit of obedience to God. Doing what God wants, even when the rest of the world tells us that that is not the direction in which we should go. We produce the fruit of love, kindness, gentleness to the people at home, to our family, the people we work with, to friends, even total strangers. See love in us. The fruit of service. We are constantly asking ourselves, how can I serve? How can I show the love of God to this person? 
How can I witness Jesus Christ to someone else? When we are like this, Jesus says that this is my father's glory, that you bear much fruit. And all of us would like to be fruitful branches. So the question becomes, how can we remain in this state of fruitfulness? Not yo-yoing between backsliding Christians and fruitful Christians. The answer is found in the overriding theme, which is deepening our commitment to Christ. And for that to happen, we become the fourth and final branch which Jesus describes, which is the connected branch. In verse four, Jesus says, remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. In this one verse, the word remain is repeated three times. In other versions, the word remain is repeated four times. And the synonyms for the word remain are endure, persist, to keep going, and to go on. The antonym or the opposite of the word remain is one word, and that word is stop. So if we don't remain, we have stopped. So Jesus is saying to us in verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me, in other words, those who endure in me, those who persist in me, those who keep on in me, those who go on in me, and I in them will produce much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If we are going to deepen our commitment to Christ, then we need to endure, we need to persist, we need to keep on, and we need to go on. And that means we need to be in regular contact with Jesus Christ. And there's only one way to maintain that connection with Jesus Christ. And that is to read his word and communicate with him through prayer. Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. And this is because Jesus provides the power we need in our life to produce the fruits of faith. So again, this evening, the question is, what kind of branch are you? We are asking ourselves, what kind of branch am I? Truly, what kind of branch am I? Am I a throwaway branch? A pruned branch? a fruitful branch, or a truly connected branch. I want to challenge us tonight to believe that we are all four of these types of branches. There are aspects of each of our lives right now that need to be thrown away. And it is my prayer that in the death of Christ that we commemorate on Friday, that everything that must die and be thrown away in us will be gone with the Lord Jesus Christ. There are some aspects of our lives that need to be pruned. We have started producing some fruit, but we are not quite there. And so God needs to cut into our lives. This is the part we don't like. God needs to cut into our lives in order that we may be truly fruitful. Then there are aspects of our life that are fruitful. We are doing well in those spaces. God is pleased with us. His glory is clear in us. But what we need to be careful of is that we are not joyful when we are producing fruit or happy when we are producing fruit. But the moment in those parts of our lives, 
something is not going right, God cuts into us, then we fall all the way back into a throwaway branch. No. What we want is to be a truly connected branch that come hell or high water, even if the mountain should be uprooted from the land and fall into the ocean, that we will still lean and trust on in God, that we will still remain connected to our vine and he connected to us. So today, before we go into a time of prayer, I want us, it is my prayer really, that God will grant us the grace to progress in every aspect of our lives from wherever we are right now, be we being pruned or fruitful or even a throwaway branch, that God will grant us the grace to progress to becoming a permanently connected branch, grafted and attached to the true vine, our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I want us to go into a time of prayer. God has revealed to us today that there are many types of branches connected to the true vine. And in each of us is one of those types of branches. Because in each of us, there's something that needs to be thrown away, something to be pruned, something that is fruitful and something that is truly connected. Tonight, I want us to pray a prayer of repentance. Those aspects of our lives that we ourselves know, that we have not committed it to Jesus. And we are not living in a way, we, th th there's deadness in us. Let us confess it to God, our Father in heaven right now. Let's ask him to prune all that is dead and diseased in us. Name it one by one. If you know what it is, name it. Say, Father, my, my, my drinking. Father, the way I treat my spouse. Father, the way I treat my children. My lackadaisical attitude towards work. The way I handle church. Whatever it is that has died in you. You know it's dead. You know that this branch is totally worthless. Confess it to our Father in heaven. Say, Lord, I, I no longer want this in my life. It's dead. I want it cut away and thrown away that I may find salvation. As we pray, let's ask God that, Father, there are aspects of my life where I'm fruitful. I know I'm patient, but maybe I'm not so kind in my words. I know I have good intentions, but maybe I never really execute them. So there's some fruitfulness in me, but Lord, I want to be fully fruitful. Ask God to help you to grow and develop. Maybe there are aspects of your life now that he is pruning, he's cutting into. It's painful. But instead of, of, of looking at the positives, instead of seeing how God is building us up so that we will reach our place of glory, we are complaining our way out of our glory. Ask God for grace to endure the hardships that we experience. Knowing that it is through these things that we build endurance that we find hope that does not fail, hope that never dies. As we continue to pray, those places where we are fruitful, let us glorify God for those aspects of our lives where we've got it right. 
Because as he said, apart from him, we can do nothing. So if we have it right, it's because we've exposed that aspect of our life to him. So let's thank him. That by his mercy and his grace, we are fruitful. But in that fruitfulness, ask for protection. That we will not backslide when we are being pruned. So that all that goodness that was in us will now fade away and nothing will be left but dead and dry leaves. A branch that needs to be thrown away. Pray for protection. For those aspects of your life where we've got it right. Finally, brethren, pray that we'll be connected in every aspect of our lives. Connected to the true vine. In our family life, our, our money life, our school life, every aspect of our being, our private lives, everything we do. That who we are in private will not be separate from who we are in public because we are so connected to the vine that we are just one person. The same on the inside as the outside, the same in private as in public. Connected to the true vine. Start winding down your prayers. If there's something you want to go back on, the four things we've prayed about are forgiveness for being, for aspects of our lives that I threw away, vine, branch, for the pruning, asking God to grant us grace, for the fruitfulness, asking God for protection. And finally, asking God to remain in us as we remain in him, to keep us consistent and focused. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening and thank you for speaking into our lives today. Lord, we are just a vessel to deliver your word, but it is by the power of your Holy Spirit that your word will sink and manifest. Forgive us for those areas in our lives which are dead and really need to be thrown away. Lead us to a place where we'll be permanently connected to you. In your word, connected to you through prayer, connected to you through fellowship like this. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, you want to hand it over back. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Reverend Nikola, for the sermon. God bless you. Um, please, at this juncture, please, if you have any question, um, you can unmute and ask, or you can type in the chat box, box and I'll read. So, please, if you have any questions for Reverend Nikola. Is there any questions? Okay. okay. Um, please, is someone speaking? Hello. Okay, looks like we don't have any questions. Um so please at this juncture, shall we pray um for Reverend Eclair for the word that she's given to us this evening as she's taught us extensively on Jesus the true vine and then need to be fruitful branches as we connect to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We want to pray that even as she's blessed us this evening, may she herself be refreshed and blessed, that she will also bear much fruit in the service that the Lord has called her into. 
and that all that she does will prosper. That the Lord will bless her family as well, that even as she's you know, in, the, in his service, as she's giving off her best, the Lord will also take care of her family, that all their needs shall be met. So, Father, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for the word we've received. We thank you for our resource person, Reverend Ikria. We thank you, Father, Lord, for the gifts that she is, the body of Christ. We pray that, Lord, may you bless her. May you increase her on every side. May she also, oh God, grow more and more, oh God, intimate with you as she connects with you on a daily basis, that she will bear much fruit to your praise and glory. Father, we thank you for her life. We pray that may she lack no good thing, oh God. And all the days of her life, Father Lord, may she live to your grace and glory. We thank you and we bless you for an answered prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay. All right. Amen. Um, so we'll take a couple of announcements before we, we end tonight's service. Um, so we have entered into um, our Easter week and... We're starting off on Friday. Um, we have um, our Good Friday services. Sorry, so tomorrow, rather, we start with Monday, Thursday. So tomorrow, there'll be a service at Bridge at 5.30 p.m. and also at Manage at 7 p.m. And on Good Friday, we'll have um, services at 7.30, at Bridge, 8.30, 10.30, and then Manage is a joint service at 9.00 and then to do at 9.30. And um, we we'll also have a Passion Music, Seven Words from the Cross um, service, that's in the evening at 6 p.m. at Rage, and it's been organized by the Akari Church Choir. And also on Holy, we have the Holy Saturday Rites, on, that's on Saturday at 6 p.m. at Rage. And then on Easter Sunday, we have a normal service, that's at Rage at 7 a.m., not 7.30, 7 a.m. at Rage, 8.30 a.m., 10.30, and then 6 p.m. And then for Manet, it will be a joint service at 9 a.m., and then to do at 9.30 a.m. And then in the evening, we have our victory service by the Akari Church um, Youth Fellowship. That's a victory concert, and it will be in the Ark Hall at 5.30 p.m. So let's come in our numbers as we celebrate our risen Christ. And then we plan it all off. On Monday, Easter Monday, we'll have our picnic. That's from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. So let us come with our families, our friends, and loved ones as we fellowship as a church. And we'll continue with our Zoom uh, morning devotions, which will end also on Saturday. Um, yeah, Saturday, we'll have our last Zoom morning devotion. So from now to Saturday, we'll be having our Zoom meetings as we usually do in the morning. So let's take notes. And um, for an Aviosi service, um, we'll be starting a new series next month, and our sub theme for April is fruit, fruitfulness and unfruitfulness. And next week, that's April third, we have a speaker who is Dr. Yao Pebi, um, to teach us. So let's come in our numbers and continue with the teaching that we've been receiving. So our theme for next month is fruitfulness and unfruitfulness. So next week, God willing, we'll be having Dr. Yao Pebi to teach us. So um, these are the announcements for tonight. So thank you very much for joining us for tonight's service. And I pray that as we go, we'll meditate on what we've been taught this evening. We will go back and listen to the sermon again and connect to Christ on a deeper level every single day as we fellowship with him so that we'll bear much fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So um at this juncture I would call, call Reverend Ikria to please give us the benediction as we close. Let us receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, guide you, keep you, watch over you, and protect you now and forevermore. Amen. Beloved, our service is ended. Let us all go forth in peace to love and Amen. the Lord. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So have a good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.